Amen. We got one verse this morning. To God be the glory this morning. Amen. Good morning to each and every one of you. We, good morning. Amen. To those who are watching us on social media this morning. I want to thank God for you all tuning in. Amen. We're praying that you all have a wonderful, safe holiday weekend. Amen. So as we go to the word this morning, amen, praise God, we're going to the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, one verse this morning, many verses to come afterwards, but Isaiah 40 and 31, amen, and the King James Version reads this morning, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Come on, I want everybody to go with me. You can read it on the screen if you don't have it. I just want to hear y'all this morning. I want y'all to read this into your spirit. Amen. Let's go. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning again. Uh, my thought for you this morning would be wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him, say, wait on the Lord. Whatever you're going through, wait on the Lord. Amen. For starters, life is a battlefield. And we're all soldiers, each of us fighting our own personal battles. Some battles are visible, like financial difficulties health issues, or conflicts even in our relationships. Others are hidden deep within us, like feelings of inadequacy or fear or doubt. You see, these battles can be daunting at times, overwhelming us with their intensity and seemingly insurability. But we're not alone in our struggles. We have a commander who is always with us, guiding us, strengthening us, and ultimately, leading us to victory. The book of Isaiah speaks of this divine strength. It tells us that even when we are weary and weak, when we feel like we can't go on, there is a source of power that never fails. And this power comes from our hope in the Lord. It is a hope that renews our strength, allowing us to soar on wings like eagles, to run and not grow weary, to walk and not be faint. You see, when we're tired and weary, when we feel like we have nothing left to give, the Lord renews our strength. So I want to go back and read verses 25 through 31 from the NIV Bible. 25 through 31, and it reads, To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens, who created all these. He who brings out the starry hosts one by one calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know God? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. The creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. Yes. Here we go. He gives strength to the weary. And increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. But those who wait on the Lord. Those who hope in the Lord. Will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. That's why we need to wait on the Lord. Now watch this. In the scripture we read, we find ourselves faced with the question, why do you complain, Jacob? This question is not just directed at Jacob, but it's also directed at all of us. We often find ourselves burdened by the trials and the tribulations of life, weighted down by our worries and our fears. But the Bible said that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power 
and of a sound mind. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. But the scripture reminds us that our way is not hidden from the Lord. Our cause is not disregarded by our God. Our burdens are not unknown by our God. It says, have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. He sees our struggles. He sees our pain and our heartache. He knows the weight that we carry around. And he does not leave us to bear these burdens alone. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is there with us, walking beside us, offering us his strength and his comfort. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. The next thing that we must consider or remember is that our burdens are not too heavy for God. There is no problem too big for our God. No situation too complex for our God. No burden too heavy for God. Because why? He is a burden bearer. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. His power is limitless. His strength is unending. He can handle our burdens. No matter how heavy they may seem to us. Now, concerning the eagle, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Now watch this. In the United States of America, our national symbol is an eagle. The bald eagle, to be exact. Anyone can look at an eagle and be amazed at its beauty as well as its character. But what is it that makes the eagle so majestic and awesome in their character that God will speak of them in this verse. It is the way that they are taught to rise to the challenge. Let's start at the beginning. When a mother eagle builds her nest, she starts with thorns and broken branches, sharp rocks, and a number of other items that seem entirely unsuitable for building a nest, a nest of material. Then she lands the nest with thick paddings of wool, feathers, and fur from animals that she has killed, making it soft and comfortable for the eggs. By the time the growing birds reach flying age, the comfort of the nest and the luxury of her bringing the free meals to them, they're quite reluctant to leave the nest. Because why? They're very comfortable. That's when the mother eagle began stirring up the nest. She removes the rabbit's fur, the lamb's wool, the soft leaves, bringing out the sharp rocks and the prickly briars and branches to the surface. As more of the bedding gets plucked out, the nest becomes more uncomfortable for the young eagles. The once soft nest now becomes a bed of discomfort. The baby eagles aren't cozy in their nest anymore. The mother wants them to be restless so that they will get out. Otherwise, they will be content and remain in the nest a lifetime. It is the goal of the mother eagle to raise mature eagles who will be able to survive on their own. And so she denies them the food in order to create a hunger so that they will be motivated to hunt for themselves. You see, the mother eagle is known to fly thousands of feet into the sky with one of her eaglets on her bike at a time and then flip over so that the baby eaglet will learn to use their wings. She will observe them from below and come to the rescue and catch the baby eagle on her bike repeatedly until it learns to fly on its own. And so it is with us in the Christian life. When we first become Christians, we feel protected in the nest. But, God's, but soon God takes us out of the nest so that he can teach us to soar on wings like eagles. God will use our struggles and our trials to teach us to trust him and strengthen our faith in him so that we will grow and become more mature. That's why he says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. Why? Because God wants us to fly. Yes. That's why we must remember that our burdens, catch this, are not meant to break us. They are meant to bring us closer to God. They are meant to help us to rely on him, to trust in him, to lean on him. They are meant to help us realize that we are not alone, that we are not helpless, that we have a God who loves us and cares for us and is there for us always, even when we fall. We must remember that our burdens are not permanent. They are temporary and they will pass. Oftentimes we use the phrase, this too shall pass. And when they do, we find ourselves stronger, wiser, more resilient. Amen. We find ourselves with a deeper faith. Amen. A stronger trust in God. Again, he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. You see, we will find ourselves renewed. Just as the scripture promises, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now you see, this is not a promise of physical strength or worldly power. It's a promise of spiritual, of the ability to endure hardships, to withstand trials, to persevere in the face of adversity. Jesus says that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And that's why he has given us power over the power of the enemy. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Now this strength that God has given us does not come from within us. It's a divine gift bestowed upon us by the one who is the source of of all strength. It is a strength that enables us to stand firm in our faith, to hold fast to our hope. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, he declares. The apostle Paul says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Look at your neighbor and say, strengthen me, Lord. Again, this is not a physical renewal but a spiritual one. It is a renewal of our faith, of our hope, of our love of God. It is, a new, it is a spiritual commitment to serve God, to follow his commandments, and to live according to his teachings. This renewal, and I love this, is not a one-time event. You ought to say, thank God. <laughs> Amen. Because it's a continuous process. It's a daily renewal. That keeps us grounded in our faith, anchored in our hope, rooted in our love. It's not the, merely the ability to keep going, but it's the ability to keep moving forward. It's the ability to keep believing. It's the ability to keep hoping. It is the ability to keep loving. The ability to keep serving God. It's the ability to keep following His commandments. It's the ability to keep living according to His teachings. No matter what challenges we may face, no matter what obstacles we may encounter, this endurance is not a human trait. It's a divine gift given to us by the one himself who endured the cross and took our sins upon himself. Now watch this. The eagle, in its grandeur and might, serves as a metaphor for the boldness we are called to embody in our spiritual lives. The eagle, as we all know, is a creature of great strength. It soars high above the earth, undeterred by the storms and winds that buffet it. It is this strength, this ability to rise above that we are called to emulate. This is a strength of spirit, a strength of character, a strength of faith. It is a strength that comes from knowing that we are loved and cherished by God. That we are held in his mighty hands. That we are guided by his wisdom and grace. This strength is something that we must cultivate into our own lives. 
This strength is something that we must strive for. It is something we must seek with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. It is something that we must pray for, we must ask for, and we must yearn for it. Courage is not the absence of fear, but the decision to face it head on. Can I say it again? Courage is not the absence of fear, but it's a decision to face it head on. Just like David did with Goliath. David said, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hands of this Philistine. David said to Goliath, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel. It wasn't, it wasn't the absence of fear, but it was David's decision to face it head on. You see, it's a determination to rise above our circumstances, to soar above our challenges, to overcome our obstacles. It's a resolve to keep going. Look at your neighbor and say, keep going. It's a, it's a resolve to keep believing, to keep trusting in God's plans for our lives. The Bible says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. But the strength of the eagle is also about resilience. It's, our, it's, a, it's about the ability to weather the storms of life. To endure the trials and tribulations that come our way. To persevere in the face of adversity. It is about the capacity to bounce back to recover, to heal, to grow. It is about the power to transform our pain into purpose. Let me say that again. It's about the power to transform our pain into purpose, our struggles into strength, our hardships into hope. Because in life, we are guaranteed to face a storm. Becoming a Christian doesn't guarantee an easy life. But a believer, we should remain faithful and wait on the Lord. John 16, 33 says it like this. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. You're going to face some trials. He said, but be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world. Rather than reacting in panic or doubt, we should feel a sense of peace. Hard times will not break us unless we let them. Hard times will not break us unless we allow them to. Storms will come, and many of these storms are unavoidable. But you have a superpower that even the storm knows it can't overcome you. I know that I didn't give you in this verse, but we talked about it earlier, Psalms 55 and 22, King James Version reads, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall abstain thee, sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Listen to the New Living Translation of that. Give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Give your burdens to the Lord. Give your burdens to the Lord. Give your burdens to the Lord. We fall and we fail because we try to hold on to them ourselves. And we can't carry all of them. He said, give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Take the eagle again, for example. When a storm is coming, instead of hiding, the eagle flies to the highest point and waits for the winds to come. When, when the storm rolls in, the eagle sets his wings in place. Y'all ever notice some birds that have their wings out when you see them like that there? All birds don't just fly like this all the time. Some birds just soar. And so what the eagle does when a storm is arising, he flies to a high point 
and he gets his wings in place to be carried by the winds above the storm. I wish I had some help there. See, this is the approach that we must take. We got to learn first how to wait on the Lord. And when the storms of life comes, use the storm against itself and show that storm who's the boss. Everything in you has trained you for moments like this. You don't have to accept the outcome that a storm will bring. Because you can get in the face of any storm and be the storm against the storm. Let us remember that our God is a God of love, a God of strength, and a God of renewal. He's not a distant deity, but a loving Father who knows us by name. He sees our struggles. He knows your pain. And who stands ready to lift us up when we stumble? There's not a tear that falls from your eyes that the Lord doesn't know about. There's not a hurt or a pain that you go through that God doesn't know about. God cares about you. He's the one who gives us the strength to the weary. He's the one that gives power to the weak and hope to the hopeless. He's the one that will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. He's the one that will give you that peace in the midst of the storm when everybody else is looking for you to fall and break down and quit and give up. That's why he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So again, he says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Oftentimes, we get ahead of God. And when we get ahead of God, that's when we fall. That's when we get in trouble, just like Peter did and died in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus said, come and pray with me. Couldn't you stay awake for a little while? But when trouble came, because Peter hadn't been praying like he should have been praying, the first thing he did was pull out his knife. You see, in the hustle and bustle of our daily lives, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, to feel like we're carrying burdens too heavy to bear. But remember this, we're not meant to carry these burdens alone. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. So let us never forget our God, the creator of the ends of the earth, the one who calls forth the starry host one by one is with us. He's our strength. He's our comfort. He's our hope. Psalms 27 and 14 puts it like this. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So as we go forth from this place today, let us carry with us the assurance of God's love and the promise of his strength. Let us face each new day with hope, knowing that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I got to close. But maybe you're just going into a storm. Wait on the Lord. Maybe you've been in a storm for a while. And you're waiting for it to pass. Again, wait on the Lord. Maybe you've been in a storm for years. And you're starting to lose hope. Wait on the Lord. Maybe you've been through the storm. And the storm is over. But you still feel broken, weary, and weak. Wait on the Lord. Job said it like this. All the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change comes. No matter where you are, God is the one who will restore your strength and give you hope again. So that you can rise up on wings like eagles. God's strength is reserved for those who know that they are weak. And know that they have no might. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. So how do we receive this strength from the Lord? 
we receive it as we wait on the Lord. God's timing is always perfect. He's never too early. He's never too late. But he's always right on time. Y'all know the saying. He may not come when you want him. But he's always on time. Why? Because he is an on time God. So when you're in the midst of your waiting. Don't lose heart. Because they that wait upon the Lord. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. And they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So as I close. Keep pressing on. Keep holding on. Keep trusting in the goodness and the faithfulness of our God. Yes. And when the road gets tough and the journey seems long, remember that God is right there with you. How do we know this? Because God can't lie. He already said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But I'll be with you always, even until the end of this age. So just know, he's walking beside you. He's holding your hand. And he's cheering you on. Now who am I preaching to this morning? You needed to hear from God this morning. So I'm prophesying to somebody this morning. Whether you're inside the sanctuary. Or watching us on social media. Listen to God this morning. As he is speaking in your spirit. He's saying to you. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Keep going. You've come too far to turn back now. He wants you to know that I'm right here with you. And I'm not going anywhere. So let's keep pressing on church. Let's keep running this race with perseverance. With our eyes fixed on Jesus. Who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And let us remember that God's love for us is unchanging, unending, and unfailing. He loves us more than we could ever comprehend. And his plans for us are good, pleasing, perfect. And so I leave you with this. Even the strongest among us grow tired and weary at times. Even the most agile among us can stumble and fall. Yet... There is a promise of renewal. A promise that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. I close with Psalms 27 and 14 again. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning.